Today I will be talking about open access to information which is an essential component uh, uh, of uh, the digital libraries. In fact, uh, it is the open access movement which gave impetus to the in institutional repositories. Uh, with the rise of democracy, people started believing the universal education will help a lot in the growth of the society. That is the reason the founders of democracy emphasized more on the education. Now, we are talking about uh, open access. Actually, the word I prefer is universal access. This is essential for the realization of uh, knowledge society. Then, when I was a student, we were talking about uh, barriers of scientific communication in especially one of the books we used to follow by Pauline Atherton. There it is written that language barrier is a huge barrier in scientific communication and the solution is uh, translation services uh, provided by library science community. Then we have the geographical barrier. Now with the advent of internet, uh, practically this barrier had been broken down and anybody can access any information in the rest of the world. Then I consider probably many of you may not agree, general publishing industry also is a barrier to scientific communication. The only solution is open access to make much of the journal articles which are reported as scientific results will be should be in open access for the to break I mean to smoothen the scientific communication. And one of the greatest hurdles in this process is the copyright laws. The copyright laws are neither user or author friendly and mostly they are publishing industry friendly. Now, let us have a look at the general publishing industry, uh, heavy and uh, escalating costs. Every year they keep on raising the cost of the subscription. Then access restrictions, that means only those who pay can access and read the articles. Then long term bondage because of the copyright laws, they are tied down to the publishers. And off late people have been talking about consortia approach wherein many libraries can group themselves and subscribe the journals in a consortia approach. But again, it has its own uh, flip side in the sense, consortia can be formed only with the approval of the publishing industry. For example, I know that uh, the Indian Statistical Institute, uh, which is a, a big subscriber to Springer public, uh, Publishers, uh, one, we were not allowed to join uh, Infonet and uh, many other consortia which are around. Uh, our, uh, that is one of the biggest problems. In fact, I was told once World Health Organization wanted to subscribe all medical journals to the third world countries. And we were told that India was not allowed because fairly they have a good uh, subscription uh, membership from the Indian community. And it would be a loss if uh, India joins the consortia of uh, medical journals. Coming to the copyright laws, they are highly biased to the publishing industry, neither user friendly or uh, author friendly. This is a real difficult situation because uh, very few people can uh, really overcome the barrier created by the publishing industry with regard to the copyright laws. The copyright, uh, if we have a look at the history of the copyright laws, Copyright Act 1976, it uh, specifies that uh, Copyright is um, in effect the life of the author plus 50 years. In case of corporate authors, it is 75 years. But again, sometime in 1998, the copyright laws were extended because the Mickey Mouse was going out of copyright of Walt Disney. So then they changed the laws in 1998 to make it the author's life for plus 70 years in case of individual authors and in case of corporate authorship, it is 128 years. Of course, officially it is uh, known as 
Sony Bono Copyright uh, Terms Extension Act. I consider the entire journal article which is uh, enslaved by the copyright laws as a freak in the market economy even because this is the only product where a producer does not get anything instead sometimes he has to pay. For example, if, uh, a, uh, if somebody wants to, for example, if somebody makes uh, a safety pin and sold it for 5, five paisa, at least the producer gets about uh, uh, 1 or 2 paisa and the mediators get much of the, uh, uh, the income that is generated out of it. But unfortunately, in case of a journal article, practically authors don't get any money in, in majority of the cases. In some cases, in prestigious journals, the authors have to pay to publish the, uh, their article. Or sometimes even they say that if you have graphic images and other things, you have to pay uh, for each color image this much or black and white image this much. That way, the instead of getting any money out of publishing, the authors have to pay. Of course, normally the many authors pass on the burden to the institute they, they are working for. So, the rationale is institutes and funding agencies supporting research uh, do not claim copyright. How come the industry, publishing industry claim the, uh, the copyright? So, in a way publish, general publishing industry does not fund any research, does not pay anything to the authors, pittance are nothing to the editors or reviewers. I know one of uh, my friends who is the chief editor of a, a journal, I asked him how much money do you pay, uh, do you get rather for uh, publishing, for being the chief editor of that journal. He says uh, it is about 100 dollars per annum and you know the journal subscription is 800 dollars per annum. That means, he does not get even one uh, subscription price for being the chief editor of the journal. Then again coming back to the journal publishing industry, it, it, the cost is unaffordable even to the forget about the individuals, even to the institutes and for many libraries. Uh, the price of uh, journal they have to pay uh, towards subscription is quite high and uh, industry has nothing to do with the content because finally it is the reviewers who are subject specialists uh, who ensure the quality of the journal does not really offer nascent information. The reason is uh, many prestigious journals uh, any article sent to that journal sees the daylight uh, after one and a half years that is a, a common period. Okay. The so called claim for quality because uh, many of these journals uh, claim that uh, it is a peer reviewed journal uh, as if open access journals are not peer reviewed. We know that even there are uh, very good open access journals which are peer reviewed with uh, a, a very, very good reviewers on their board. Now, let us look at uh, the great uh, claim by the industry that uh, uh, the peer review is the best. I would like to point out uh, it is of course uh, among the available approaches perhaps one of the best, uh, but not without uh, pitfalls. Some editors reject an article without sending the paper to the referees. Okay, after all we are human beings, we have our own prejudices. Some editors may deliberately choose a harsh referee to have it rejected. And of course, with the, over the experience, we know that some reviewers tend to be more uh, fussy and hard. So, if the editor does not want it to be accepted, naturally he, he sends it to uh, a harsh editor. Then bias against authors depending on the nationality, gender, institutions. I know one of my friends when he was uh, an, an economist, when he was in uh, Austria, he was telling that uh, his articles were easily getting published, whereas when he came back to India, better articles are being rejected. So, we, we have the prejudices against uh, 
some nationality or gender or any situation. Then author and uh, referee belonging to the opposing schools of thought. We know that uh, there are many at a higher level of any subject we have uh, the opposing schools of thought and this is more uh, apparent in the case of uh, social scientists uh, where the leftist authors and rightist authors uh, practically uh, at loggerheads at each other. But again we have a classic case for example in case of the Nobel laureate Chandrasekharan we know that for a long time as one of the British uh, astrophysicists rejected his ideas, he, he never caught the attention of the world and he got recognition when two of his students no, got Nobel Prize. Later when they looked at to the teacher's work, even Chandrasekharan got Nobel Prize. So the biases are always there. Reviewers can reject a good paper and write paper using the ideas. This is also quite common and delaying the publication of potentially competing research. So they try to delay it so that uh, their group or their friends uh, they publish it first. But that is the reason sometimes people insist that the, the article was first received on so and so date. This is of course there are some mechanisms in place to prevent some of these pitfalls. Now, in any case, we believe that uh, the underlying strength of peer review is the concerted effort by a large number of uh, researchers and scholars who work to assure that valid and valuable works are published and conversely to assure that invalid and non-valuable works are not published. So still we believe that peer reviewing uh, is a good idea though that is not the only idea. So what are the alternatives to peer reviewing? We have certification based that is reviewers are trained. We know that in some cases if reviewers are asked to reveal their name probably they may be more responsible. But again we know that many journals they, they do not reveal the name of the reviewer so that the authors do not get uh, upset about okay so and so is my uh, I mean he dislikes me or something like that. Then open reviewing okay reviewers are signed I mean that is what exactly the open reviewing means. Then commentary based readers can comment before and after reviews okay nowadays with uh, the technology uh, even before it is an article is um, uh, published formally anybody can leave their comments so that author may modify just as in the case of reviewers suggesting any modifications. Okay. Then collaborative filtering that is guiding the readers on what to read but again it also has its own pitfalls. How do we guarantee the judgment of uh, a, a set of uh, uh, people are giving us the right uh, article to suggest then institution based that is institutional repositories then citation based okay if a particular author is heavily cited probably his article has a, a better value no peer review personally you may laugh at me i prefer this for the simple reason that we know many a time uh, the newspapers uh, uh, report and we know that many of these newspapers are a bit biased but finally it is the readers who decide whether to accept something or not. So is the case uh, the no peer review means let the readers decide whether a particular author or a particular article is of interest to him or it is worth reading. But again the problem with this uh, as in the case with uh, many things it also has flip side because plethora of people keep writing. Uh, probably without much value. So what is open access? Open access refers to online research output that are free from all restrictions on access and use. This is given by the famous uh, uh, open access champion Peter Suber. 
and here the emphasis is in free means the freedom to use or freedom to access. So, the emphasis is more on the freedom when we talk about uh, free and open access software, uh, open source software also the emphasis is more on the freedom not on the cost. Of course, it is there the cost also is very important. It implies cost also, but it implies more than that that is the freedom. Then open access can be applied to all forms of published research output including peer reviewed or non peer reviewed academic journal articles or conferences or thesis or book chapters and monographs. Then I would like to tell the some of the important in initiatives that have taken place in the past which led to our uh, a big movement. Then Budapest open access initiative that happened sometime in 2001. Then association of college and research libraries, the principles and strategies for the reform of scholarly communication that was in 2003. Bethesda statement open access publishing again it is in 2003. Then Berlin declaration also happened in 2003 on open access to knowledge in sciences and humanities. Then UN has also jumped into the bandwagon and had a world summit on the information society declaration of principles and plan of action okay, in 2003. Then OECD declaration on access to research data and public funding that happened in 2004. Okay. Then another important one from the librarian's point of view is the IFLA released in 2004 a statement on open access to scholarly literature and research documentation and Salada declaration committed to equity. To go a little more about not exactly a, an elaboration uh, about the Budapest and other Bethesda Berlin, uh, the BOAI is a response to the growing demand make publicly funded research free. After all, uh, much of the research is funded by taxpayers money. Okay. So, the rationale or argument behind it is why when public money is spent on research, why the publication should not be free. Okay. Why somebody has to own the copyright and somebody has to pay the subscription to access it. Then other declaration the Bethesda open access publishing, then Berlin declaration open access to knowledge in sciences and humanities. So, some of the organizations that promote open access are the Spark Europe, then open access scholarly publishers association, then you have confederation of OA repositories which is a, a recent initiative which has become fairly active and I think they are spreading their wings to the Asian region also which was started as a EU project, then LIBOR Association of European Research Libraries. To for the success of open access movement we should have a, a kind of a two pronged approach. Uh, one is open access journals. So, we have uh, luckily directory of open access journals DOAJ and uh, uh, you can see right now it lists almost about 9000 journals in 129 countries. Uh, as on uh, June 2016. Then of course, the one of the best software from public knowledge project that is uh, OJS open access journal system which is being used by many open access journals and I know even in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh or in India many people use this particular software which has uh, lots of bells and whistles uh, to publishing a journal including blind reviewing, double blind reviewing and uh, you can uh, do many things with this particular software and it also supports uh, uh, sta standards and protocols like uh, OAI PMH where you can harvest the metadata from these journals. Then open access repositories, so one is the journal side, the other is on the repository side. We have a registry of open access repositories. This is opendoor.org and it, it lists about uh, uh, 3000 repositories uh, as on June 2016. 
Another site is openarchives.org. Then uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign has another wonderful site called uh, Gita Grainger. The software for digital repositories is of course, uh, many of you must have known DSpace, ePrints, Fedora Commons, uh, which are fairly powerful software in establishing institutional repository. Then, what are the strategies for open access? Institutes, learned bodies should initiative, initiate OA repositories and publish OA journals. That is important. And researchers should be encouraged to publish in open access journals and submit to open access repositories. Then government and funding agencies should mandate publishing in OA journals. In fact, I know that the European Commission, whenever they sanction projects to uh, a group of scientists, they mandate it that the publications should be made available in open access journals. So, there should be a national policy with regard to scientific publishing. So, key players are government, heads of institutions, scientists and research community and library and information people. So, lastly, I would like to emphasize on open mantra, which is my own uh, idea that is uh, provide open access to information through open access journals like the journals in DOAJ and institutional repositories. In the course of time, you will know that India has contributed a lot many institutional repositories and off late, we are talking about open data repositories. That is, whenever scientists publish an article, obviously many of the publications depend on the data they collected, whether it is experimental data or survey data. And nowadays, with uh, the rise of uh, open data repositories, uh, people are uh, expecting the data should be published so that it can be verified and more importantly reused and reinterpreted. Then of course, uh, to promote uh, uh, the open access learning, we need uh, open um, source, uh, open access to courseware that is e-learning objects in the form of MOOCs or anything. So, whenever we provide uh, these uh, in information through journals or repositories or uh, the, uh, the courseware, it should follow the open source software and more importantly, it should follow open standards. Open standards are very, very important in the sense for long term preservation, it is always a good idea to avoid proprietary standards. If the content is in open standards, in future, even if a particular format like uh, uh, LibreOffice or some format or uh, JPEG uh, images are outdated, they can be transformed to newer format without uh, paying uh, any royalty to the uh, the proprietary in, in case of proprietary formats where the format is uh, copyrighted by some company or industry so that's the reason it is similar to that of uh, open access journals uh, or journal articles see the formats are also should be open standards okay that is uh, that's why uh, i believe uh, to promote open access to information, open mantra is very, very essential. <music>